All right, let's, uh, let's do example number 13. So example number 13, it says solve the equation by completing the square. So my equation for number 13 is x squared plus 6x is equal to 7, right? And so we want to solve that by completing the square. So I've written down the equation. Now completing the square means that I'm going to add something to both sides and then, then take the square root. So this is, uh, this is just like the example problem we did yesterday. I can't remember which one. But I need to um, add something to both sides. So on my next line, I'm going to say x squared plus 6x, leave a little blank spot there, is equal to 7. Now, the algorithm for this is simple. What's my middle number? What's the B term? 6. So I'm going to take 6, put it over 2, and square it. Now, what's 6 divided by 2, though? 3. So what's 3 squared? 9. So over here, whatever I do on one side, i got to do on the other. So if I'm going to add 9 to this side, I have to add 9 to this side. Okay? Does that make sense? And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to clean this up a little bit so you guys can see what I'm doing. Okay? I'm really saying x squared plus 6x plus 3 squared is equal to 7 plus 9, which is 16. Now, this is what we call a perfect square. This is the exact same as x plus 3 squared. You guys with me so far? Remember that? Okay, and we can verify that, and I will in just a second. That's equal to 16. So now what's the next logical step? I have a perfect square on one side, a square on the other. Take the square root. Good, good. So I'm going to take the square root here, square root here. Now over here I've got x plus 3, right? Because when you, when you take the square root of a square, you're left with just the base. And then over here I've got 4, right? You're supposed to say you're half right, Mr. Adams. Thank you for participating. Yeah. So what do I got to put? Plus or minus, right? So then if I move the 3 to the other side, I get negative 3 plus or minus 4. And we could split that apart. We could say x is equal to negative 3 plus 4 or x um, is equal to negative 3 minus 4. So x is equal to 1 or x is equal to negative 7. Now, how could I verify that? There's like, I've showed you like 17 million ways to verify that. Look it up in the back of the book. Yeah, that's one way. What else? On your website? Yeah, you could plug it in on the website. We could do it that way too. Hey, you want to do it that way? Let's do it that way too. You guys ready? Um, where is it at? Mr. Adams, one, okay. So, remember, Mr. Adams put this fancy smancy calculator. You can verify it this way, too. I was going to use the TI-83. Uh, we want to practice with the TI-83 as much as we can. Why? Because that's the only thing you could use on the ECT. You can't take my website with you. But if I write down uh, x squared mm, plus 6, x equals 7. Now what does it say? It says we could solve using the quadratic formula, we could solve using this, we could solve using that. I don't, I just want to solve for x. Okay? Now if I hit answer, what should I get? 1 and negative 7. What? Pretty cool, huh? Now how do I do that on your calculator? Well, I could come in here and just to kind of verify that, I could clear this out, and I could clear this out, and I could plug in the equation x squared minus 6x. Now, instead of saying equals 7, what would I do? I would say minus 7, because I need to set that equal to 0, so I need to move the 7 over to the other side. And guess what this number is? 
negative one. Let's let's verify to make sure. If I plug in negative one, oh wait, uh oh, oh uh, do you see what Mr. Adams did? I plugged it in wrong. It's not minus six x. It's plus six x. Woo man, that makes a difference. All right, okay, that's better. So now if I hit trace and I plug in one, y equals zero. If I plug in negative seven, y equals zero. Pretty cool, huh?